Overlord Web Novel First Half Invaders of the Large Tomb Arc Chapter 60 Settings The Great Underground Tomb of Nazarick The home base of the infamous Yggdrasil Guild Ains Ulgaon Its impregnability was to the level where a mere 41 people repelled a mass of 1,500 people. It has ten floors, but attackers had at most made it only to the eighth. Ains Ulgaon Mamanga the protagonist should be Pararankino Bukubuku Chagama, Lucifer, Hero Hero, Blue Planet, Nishikian Rai, Touch Me, Albert Alan Odal, Yameko, Tabula Smeragdina, and Koro Machi Machi, past comrades of Ainzul Gaon. Sebastian, the land steward of Nazarek, Shaltir Bloodfallen, true vampire, the guardian of the first to third floors. Gargantua, tactical siege golem. The guardian of the fourth floor. He is not a guardian, but is so. Cositis. Bug type. Appearance wise. Monster. The guardian of the fifth floor. Ora de Bay Fiora. Dark elf. The guardian of the sixth floor. Demiurge. Demon type monster. Guardian of the seventh floor. Pandora's actor. The guardian of the treasury. Technically not a guardian. Kyuhuku. A mysterious existence. He is not a guardian but protects an area. He has the ability to infinitely summon his kin and has a villainous fighting method. However, his level is not high around level 30. Neuronist Painkill. Special Information Officer of the Great Underground Tomb of Nazarek. Torturer. Favorite food is brain miso, brain paste. The owner of a well-rounded body. She will immediately go to Ain's bed if called. Ain's harem plan number one. Master musician? Secret. Pistonia Wanko head maid. Dog. Priest with a level second to the guardians. One of the two leaders of kindness in Nazarek. Titus Aeneas Secundus. Head librarian. Skeleton mage. Yuri Alpha. Dullahan. Monk. Battle maid. French roll. One. And one E San character. Tomboy, Lupus Regina Beta, Secret, Priest, Battle Maid Braids, 2. Tan Skin and a Character Who Gives Into Her Desires, Narbral Gamma, Doppelganger Magic Caster, Working as an Adventurer Named Mammon, Battle Maid Side Tale 3, CZ21128, CZ, Delta, Automaton, Gunner, Battle Maid Ponytail, 4. Solution Epsilon. Predatory Slime. Assassin. Battle Maid. Shinyan 5. Entoma Vasilisa Zeta. Secret. Magic Warrior. Battle Maid. Side Up. 6. Normal Maids. Homunculi. They have no battle power. Pinison Pole Perlia. Dryad. Spirit of Trees. Lives in the sixth floor after she was scouted by Aura in the Great Forest of Tob. She is together with several of her friends. Baharuth Empire, imperial capital Arwantar, used to be a country that practiced feudalism. But since the Blood Emperor rooted out the influential nobles and took their authority, it has become a dictatorship. Behind the scenes of these actions is a plan to maintain and strengthen the direct army of the Emperor, the current knights, in the place of the Blood Emperor's grandfather. Jerknev Rune Farlord El Nix, the Blood Emperor, the owner of the highest specs in this world. Charisma Max, Flutter Paradigm, the Chairman Magic Caster of the Empire. Age is 268. He can use quite a high level of magic and has power at the class of the 13 heroes. Lightning Bazywood Peshmel, the head of the four strongest knights of the Empire. Heavy Explosion, Immovable, Lighting, Fierce Gale. By the way, the name Lightning comes from his weapon. He has a mithril full body armor that was lightened and adamantium weapons. The four knights all have the basic equipment shown below. Gauntlet of strength, increase of muscle strength, amulet of health, a bonus to resistance to poisons and illness, belt of constitution, increase to endurance, ring of resistance, bonus to magical resistance, ring of protection, increase to defense, greaves of quickness, increase of movement speed, mantle of elemental protection, Lowering of elemental damage, shirt of cure wounds, low ranked healing magic that can be used once per day, helm of mind guard, bonus to resistance to spiritual attacks. 
and they have at least 1,000 gold pieces worth of potion. Workers are known as people who do dirty work and the dropouts of adventurers. Foresight, Hecarin Termite, the warrior team leader who uses two sword style, Naturyu, Roberdick Galtrin, Priest, Archie E.B. Rylfert, a young magic caster, owner of a special ability, Imina, half-elf thief, Greenham, the team leader of the worker team, Heavy Masher, Palpatora, a warrior known as the Iron Wall, Area Uzrith, the team leader of the worker team, Tenbu, a genius of the sword, Re Estei's kingdom, a feudal country where the king holds 30% of the country's territory. The major nobles hold another 30% of the country, while the remaining 40% are held by the lesser nobles. The country is currently split into two factions, the royal faction and the nobility faction. Both factions are currently locked in a power struggle. Many hold the opinion that the country would have crumbled if not for the annual war against the empire. Due to this, the current king choose not to abdicate the throne. Ranpasa III, the king of Re Estei's kingdom. The golden renner Thier Chardilon Rylvezelf, politics cheat. Extremely beautiful. Climb, a soldier under Renner, an extreme hard worker. Virgin, Gazef Stranoff, the strongest warrior of the kingdom. Of low birth, but climbed up only by virtue of his sword. Twer, quite the common character, bubbly and sweet. She is a bit above twenty. Real name is Tsare, the older sister of Ninya. She was taken by a noble when she was thirteen for six years. The noble then grew bored of her and sold her, causing her to experience hell for four months. Or so it should be. Blue Rose, the strongest female adventurer group of the kingdom. Currently the A-plus adventurer party in the kingdom. Lockyus Alvian FIA Andra, a beautiful priest warrior with blonde drill hair. She has one of the weapons used by the thirteen heroes and is wicked. Evil Eye, a mystery magic caster whose face is hidden by a mask. Wicked in a lot of ways. Author's Annotation. Originally in this world setting, the name Evil Eye is weird, but I could not come up with anything better, and so I ignored it. There is not much of a meaning to it, so please do not pay attention to it. Gagarin. A warrior famous for various reasons. She like a wicked bad. Tina. Past Igenia. One of triplets. She is wickedly lesbian. Tia. Past Igenia. One of triplets. She is wickedly Shotokan. The Eight Fingers. An underground organization. Zero second in command of the Eight Fingers. He is second, but his battle ability is high to the point that no one can command him, and is the strongest man in the Eight Fingers. He looks like a bald giant with tattoos all over his body. The name Zero came about as he believed no one surpassed him, and in fact, in a battle of fists only he would be the strongest in the kingdom. He can fight evenly with Gazef. If it is a monk that we have encountered, Zenburu, Zero can crush him. He has a monk-type class called Shamanic Adept, and the tattoos on his body are due to that class ability and a spell tattoo, Cursed Rune, from a special magic item. The spirits of animals live in his tattoos, and he can summon their bodies to strengthen his own as a Shamanic Adept. He has the ability to activate three of his tattoos at the same time the legs of the panther, the back of the falcon, and the arms of the rhinoceros to create the move single strike kill that has an amazing destructive power. I plan for his heroic appearance to appear in the kingdom. Keep your eyes peeled. Lublina, the third in command of the eight fingers. The person with the next highest battle strength after zero. She is a person with an androgynous beauty. However, she wears men's clothing. She always has a kind smile on her face but she is broken inside. She has a fetish for watching the suffering faces of people. For that reason she is in charge of cleanup in the brothel, and Lublina has the highest kill count within the Eight Fingers. By the way she is female, but there is no one that talks about this within the Eight Fingers. There were in the past, but ever since Lublina killed one in a terrible way with a bright smile on her face, those people have since disappeared. Lublina possessed a magical rapier that was known as Heart Penetrate. Since she possesses the Duelist class, 
her fighting ability will be fully demonstrated when her opponent is alone. Lublina received training that enhanced her evasion and striking capabilities, further improving her lethality. As a trump card, she can use the first rank of magic. Heart Penetrate is a powerful magic sword that rapidly increases the piercing power and the amount of damage on strike. Most armor can be easily cut through like paper by this sword. I plan for her heroic appearance to appear in the kingdom. Keep your eyes peeled. Fortress City E. Rantel. A city under the direct control of the monarchy of Re Estes. A fortress city that sits at the border of the empire and the theocracy and is protected by its walls. This city has never been attacked, but since the war with the empire occurs nearby, it is used as a supply depot. And so there are many mercenaries, and the atmosphere that they are going to war is strong. Panasolii Gruz de Rettenmayer, Mayor of E. Rantel, Pluton Einzak, Adventurer's Guildmaster, Early Forties, Theo Rakeshire, Magician's Guildmaster, Last Thirties, Gignal Elshi, High Priest of the Earth God. In terms of an adventurer, he would be a class. Late Thirties, Lizzie Berar, a magic caster that works in E. Rantel as a pharmacist. An old woman, Faye Berar, Lizzie's granddaughter. She herself is a pharmacist. Bardo Raflor, a great merchant who works in the food industry, has quite the authority in E. Rantel. Banyera, a low-ranked adventurer. Fighter, Ishpen Ronbel, a receptionist of the guild, views Mammon as her rival. Wina Harshia, a receptionist of the guild, a person with normal sensitivity. Her bottom is on the large side, big. Acts of Cyclone E-Class Adventurers. Peter Mork, Warrior. Luckrut Volve, Ranger. Nina, the Spellcaster, Wizard. Dine Would Wonder, Druid. Bandits. Zack, a simple bandit. Solution ate him and found him delicious? Literally. Brain Unglaus, a man who fought Gazef in the deciding battle in the past. Katana user who has a heavenly talent. Karn Village. Enri Amat, a simple village girl. Sixteen years old. Older sister. Nimu Amat, a simple village girl. Younger sister. Goblin Troop. Nineteen subordinates loyal to Enri. Comprised of twelve level eight goblins, two level ten goblin archers, one level 10 goblin mage, one level 10 goblin cleric, two level 10 goblin riders and wolves, and one level 12 goblin leader. Lizard man tribes. Zeriusu Shasha, a lizard man traveler, wields one of the four treasures, Frostpain. Crush Lulu, representative chief of the Red Eye tribe, an albino lizard man skilled in druid's magic. Zenburu Gugu, dragon tusk tribe chief, monk. One arm is huge. Shasuryu Shasha, Green Claw Tribe Chief. Zeriusu's older brother. Rororo, a four-headed hydra. Argland Council State. A city-state that is located northwest of Re Estei's kingdom and surrounded by mountains. The city was made by multiple races of demi-humans and currently they live together harmoniously. The management is handled by a few select members from each race to form a council and the ones to pay attention to are the five permanent dragons of the council. The adventurers are mostly demi-human. Their relationship with the slain theocracy is bad, and both hate each other. Humans are low in number. The surrounding marine races like the sea lizardmen and mermen are also part of Argland Council State. Swaindruk's Vation, Sua, Sandurukasu Vation, Platinum Dragon Lord, the strongest dragon amongst the five permanent members of the council. User of Wild Magic. Svelia Myronshik, Severia Marinshiruku. Blue Sky Dragon Lord. Of course he, she will not appear. Omnadsense Ikriblus. Aminidosensu Ikurabirusu. Diamond Dragon Lord. Of course he, she will not appear. Kessenblut Yukrilith. Kessenbaruto Yukukurusu. Obsidian Dragon. Of course he, she will not appear. Zerjilkalia Nahiant, Zerjurkaria Nahiunto, WYRM Dragon. Of course he, she will not appear. Roble Kingdom, located towards the southwest of the kingdom and west of the slain theocracy. 
Boys that reach the age where they are allowed to carry weapons would be conscripted by the country. The border of the Holy Kingdom is protected a line of fortification. Ablion Hill, a large hill in between Roble Kingdom and the slain theocracy. There used to be a kingdom of the small hill people, but it was destroyed by heteromorphs like goblins, ogres, and orcs. It is currently a lawless area contested day and night by countless groups of heteromorphs. Others include dark dwarves, and in exchange for goblin, ogre, and orc slaves, they provide metal arms for the war. The slain theocracy has sent forces out several times, but they only ended in temporary success. The Great Forest of Ivisha, the forest south of Ablion Hill. Secret, the slain theocracy, a nation centered on the teachings of the six great gods. The neighboring countries do not enjoy a good working relation with them as they are mostly centered on the teachings of four major gods. Amongst the human nations, the theocracy possesses the strongest national power due to its strong military. Their religious ideology was mainly that of humans are the race chosen by God. They conducted military operations within the nations surrounding the theocracy with the intention of the suppression of demi-humans and other races. However, it seems their actions serve a bigger agenda. The six high priests, secret, highest priest, secret, the three department heads, secret, the six princess Micus, princess Miko of water, princess Miko of fire, princess Miko of wind, princess Miko of earth, princess Miko of light and princess Miko of darkness. All of them are users of priest type rank five magic, but this is a secret. Others. The Thirteen Heroes, a group of mythological heroes. They consisted of people that existed 200 years ago. The members consisted of necromancer Rigrets Bears Korau, the Dark Cultist, the Magic Swordsman, the Great Priest, the Holy Magician, the Magic Smith Dwarf, one of the royal family of the High Elves, Air Giant Warrior Chief, the Dark Knight, Platinum, Sek, Demon Gods, beings that were sealed by the Thirteen Heroes. Existence that could be known as the demon kings, the deities that once served the six great god fell and became the demon gods, country destroyer, a vampire lord, destroyed by the thirteen heroes. She is called as such as she made a country her capital and filled it with the dead. She can use up to the fifth rank of magic. Eight greed kings, top secret, god dragon. The existence that was the last fight of the Thirteen Heroes. Their battle marked the end of the Thirteen Heroes' adventurers. It is said that they were defeated. After returning, the Thirteen kept silent. And the truth remains in darkness. Below is a weird section of hidden setting. One might enjoy Overlord better if they did not read this. I made this to feel satisfied. The number of magic items that adventurers have. A pricing guide and others. World item. Only one of each can exist at a time and are the best items in Yggdrasil with special abilities. Totaling 200. Taken from the developers. The ones recorded on the wiki number 50. This is as attempts to steal will occur and so owners of such items will desperately conceal the fact. Even the information of the 50 was gained by dishonorable means, such as spies, information type magic, leaks from players who left guilds. The guild who used such various methods to collect information to make the wiki burning three eyes was destroyed by a coalition of top guilds. A famous world item would be the Ouroboros Ring. This is a strengthened version of the overrank magic, Wish Upon a Star. Its effect would be to have the Yggdrasil developers and company fulfill one wish. The first time this was used was to block off one of the nine world for a month, preventing anyone but those from the guild that used it from entering. This was as a certain DQN guild had monopolized a vein of rare metals and this was used for the purpose of stealing it. After a month of investigation, the vein was found. And since it was mined, rare metals had finally made its way into the market for the first time. After a month, a war broke out between the DQN guild who wanted it back and the guild that was using it. The guild that had used it gained the support of other guilds and repelled, killed, most of the members of the DQN guild, and won. And due to this, a small amount of rare metals always found its way into the market. 
on the homepage of 2CH were the frustrated words of the DQN Guildmaster. It is frustrating that it was stolen, but we had extra so it is not too bad. We were using the extra to make golems, but 72 of them. Can we do it? The meaning of his words are still unknown. There are others. Spear that kills the holy. A dangerous world item. In exchange for the user's character data being deleted, it activates its ability. The developers went mad. Holy Grail. Healing? Typing? Grai I Grai I. Owned by World Searchers. Yggdrasil Leaf. Protection type. Jellerhorn. Gyrorin. A higher level version, the Overrank Magic. Written. Summoning of an Avatar of God. Call Avatar? Founder Fonda. The management went mad. A dove brings an olive branch. What is this? Avarice and Generous, owned by Ains Ulgaon. Planned for Ains to use it in the last chapter of the first half. World Champion, a class that one needs to clear special conditions to use. The strongest warrior class in Yggdrasil and official cheat. There are nine world champions, one for each world. Asgard, Alfheim, Vanaheim, Nioavalar, Midgard, Jotunheim, Nivelheim, Helheim and Muspelheim. They could defend themselves absolutely with Dimensional Gap and could deal massive damage with Dimensional Slash. It was a class that also had the feature to be slightly stronger when in their world. This class has extremely high fighting ability against the upper high players they can take on 3, the upper middle players for upper low 5, and so on. However, it is unclear who would win if they are up against someone with a trump card or a world item. By the way, the special condition was to win in an official tournament. In a battle between the world champions, the champion of the overall tournament was the Jotunheim champion, second was Alfheim and third was Helheim, but in the battle between the second and third, the third won. An opinion formed where there should be a guild of only world champions, but three refused and so it was at an impasse. I'm digressing, I never thought about this, but the upper high players should have at least 500 people, right? The difficulty is high but it is not an impassable wall. Everyone has the possibility. It is a wall one can pass by doing a full nerd mode, developing a character with detailed planning, finding the one that suits you amongst the enormous amount of data, recycling, having a heart for the exploration of the unknown, and having good guild members. And the warriors need to have a good body in real life. Addicts are existences that can do all that. If they are useless, then RMT, real money trade, since it is a game where a huge number play, it is impossible for anyone to be unparalleled, absolute strongest. However, a world champion with a world item that turned into a boss via a curse would be in an unparalleled state. Actually, the world champion Muspelheim, who turned into one of the seven deadly sins, fought evenly against 30 players, then chased until destruction, then failed. After this, the Muspelheim festival began, and the character was deleted by the developers. A new tournament began, and the second Muspelheim was the first female, appearance-wise, world champion. Dragon Lord. Dragon Lords are strong dragons, but they are called that when other dragons treat them with respect. Or they just call themselves that, and the names change depending on their development. Names when they are growing include Ancient Dragon, Old Dragon, Young Dragon. Would it be easy to understand if you think about if as the recognized names of the five dragons who are permanent members of the council are nicknames? By the way, dragons that are in the last stage of development have a strength that cannot be defeated by the race of humans. As expected of the race who ruled this world in the past. Level. The game Yggdrasil has two types of levels, and in total 100 can be gained. The two types are the racial and class levels. Ains is a skeleton mage, race 15 LV, Lich, race 10 LV, Demolic, race 5 LV, Overlord, race 10 LV, True Necromancer, class 10 LV, Chosen of Undead, class 10 LV, etc. Shaltir is a vampire, race 10 LV, True Vampire, race 10 LV, Priestess, class 10 LV, Curse Caster, class 10 LV, etc. Country Destroyer is a vampire, race, 10 levels, true vampire. A vampire princess which is not in Yggdrasil, race, levels, magic caster, levels, 
so the total levels may be higher. Monsters are different. Monsters are not counted with racial and class levels, instead monster levels are used. This is added to class levels, if they have. In the case of Brain Unglaus, he was turned into a vampire by Shaltir. However, would a vampire's levels, same as Shaltir, be added to his warrior levels? No. He is a monster with vampire, monster, levels, added to his warrior, levels. This is what happened after Shaltir sucked his blood and turned into a monster. And so there is a difference when a dragon lord reaches hero class and a human reaches hero class, the difference in monster level opens a gap between them. Normal humans do not have a racial level, their first level is their class level. However, for a dragon to reach a level 1 warrior class and a human reaching a level 1 warrior class, in game terms, the experience needed is vastly different. I believe you can roughly understand. Skill points. Skill points increase with the racial and class levels. The growth rate is in this order. Heteromorphs demi-humans humans. For a random skill point, a human human race would be 1, a goblin demi-human would be 2, and a skeleton mage heteromorph would be 3. This is only in the case of comparing their best stats, but it should be fine to think of this as the general case. For the first level, a human has no racial level and so it would go to his class. A fighter's skill point would raise by 2. For a first level of human, his skill point would be 3, 2 plus 1. Class level and race. A goblin 4, 2 plus 2. Racial level and race. A skeleton mage 6, 3 plus 3. Racial level and race. In relation to the raising of racial skill points, a human and skeleton mage would have a ratio of 1 to 3. At level 100, it would be 100 to 300. This is a rough estimate. Basically, in this way, heteromorphs are strong. However, after taking a new racial class, the rate of skill point increase would favor the one with more, and so the skill points would also increase. However, heteromorphs have penalties. They cannot have certain classes, cannot enter certain cities, is fine to PK, penalties depending on race, and cannot equip certain equipment. Even if they take only one level, the penalty activates. Jobs that have difficult requirements would have a higher rate of skill point increase. And there is the case of only humans being able to have that class. And rather than increasing racial class, characters that take various classes would be stronger. This is as skills are better than skill points. There is a theory that if one wants to make a strong character, they should not raise their racial level. And that is why humans and not heteromorphs are popular in Yggdrasil. However, the final racial class of the heteromorphs have very high skill points. Due to the raw high skill points, strong skills will be even stronger. Crazily stronger. Shall I increase the number of classes? I feel that it was not enough as I thought it was. Ranks of Magic First rank of Magic, Adventurers of EF Class The Basics of Being a Magic Caster, The First Steps. However, there are many who stay at this rank for life. Popular ones include magic to improve the milk of livestock in villages, magic to make delicious stew, magic to make spices like salt. Second rank of magic, adventurers of C, D class, the realm where hardworking magic casters reach. If a talentless person works hard, this is his limit. Third rank of magic, adventurers of A, B class, if one can reach here, he is celebrated as a great magic caster. This is the realm where those hardworking of average talent reach the end of their line. Fourth rank of magic, adventurers of A+, plus the realm where humans with talent work extremely hard can reach. Basically those who live side by side with danger, like adventurers. Top level in a country, five are sufficient. Fifth rank of magic, adventurers of hero class, this and further levels are hero class. It is the realm where even those with talent cannot reach. At a level of one in a country, it is not strange for bards to sing of them. Famous ones include Blue Sky Dragon Lord, Pontiff of the Slain Theocracy, and She May Be Dead But, Country Destroyer, Sixth Rank of Magic, Adventurers of. There are none at a level where there is only one in the surrounding countries. At a level where one would be engraved in the annals of history, and it would be strange for even those not in the same field to not know of him. Known ones are Flutter Paradigm and The Thirteen Heroes.
there are several in the shadows. The demon gods seem to use the seventh rank. Tenth rank of magic? Rumors of it exist. But there is no way someone who can actually use it exists, right? No, it seems that the legendary eight greed kings used it, but... It is nothing more than a rumor. A children's story. Above that? Stupid. There is no way that exists, right? There is a way to use the eighth rank of magic with a large ritual. But in the center of it is a human who can use the fifth rank of magic and can improve it. It is also necessary for a large number of those who can use the third rank of magic. Even with this, it can only be improved up to two ranks, and it is believed that there is some form of device. Normally a country is needed to support this. As Flutter does not have a skill to amplify magic, he cannot conduct a large ritual. Guilds. The maximum number of people in guild in Yggdrasil is 100. Amongst them are the high-ranked guilds, and there is a top 10 ranking based on points. These points include the average level of the members' world exploration points, number of world items, production points, home base points, shifting of points during PK, unlimited accumulation of points during guild wars. According to rumor, the amount of money one spends is also a factor. First place, Trinity. Aim to attack the 2CH alliance. It is an alliance of three guilds. It includes the guilds of first, the father, second, the son, and third, the Holy Spirit, the guild that lead the battle against the 2CH alliance. Second place, World Searchers, an adventure guild that aims solely for new discoveries. Its base is very poor and does not own many world items, but there is no guild that comes close to rivaling them in world exploration. It is said that it is the guild that best expresses how the company wanted people to enjoy the game. Third place, the 2CH alliance, actual name is different. A giant guild that, if you included associated guilds, it would have over 1,000 people. In its golden age, it had 3,000. Since it is huge, problems easily occur and it faced hostility from more than half of the top guilds. Its base was destroyed in the past war. Since they had large numbers, they could not decide their direction, and they were weak as this was the first time this occurred, and they had the experience of all their world items being taken. From then on, their numbers dropped, weakening them. However, as expected of them that they maintained the honor of the highest number of members. Ninth place, Ains Ulgaon, the guild with the base of the great underground tomb of Nazarek that is known for being impregnable. They left a legend where only 41 members exterminated a task force, the top guilds did not participate at all, of 1,500 people, actual number of players were less. By the way, all humans that saw the movie of what happened at the 8th floor screamed that it was impossible, and the official mail was burst with questions of whether it was an illegal construction. Others. Overseas Guild. A pro-Japanese guild that is made of people who can read or speak Japanese. They mostly just enjoy the game, but ever since the 2CH Alliance stole the world item they finally got their hands on, they changed. They are mostly from Korea, China, and Taiwan, but not necessarily. CU Guild a guild comprised solely of CU. Their numbers are low, and so are their abilities, but they have countless vanguard guilds, though they don't admit it, and their ability to move people is number one in Yggdrasil. Mercenary Magicians Guild, a guild that has 100 level 100 magic casters with over 50 world disaster players. This destructive power is absurd, and it is said that victory favors the side with them on it. However, this guild is extremely weak in close quarters, and so the movie of them being divided and decimated by a dream team of six world champions is still a legend up to now. Others like these exist. By the way, guild weapons are a necessary simple when making a guild, and it can store a huge amount of data. And so if done badly, it will still be an unparalleled weapon, but if broken, it means the guild is broken. When broken, all members of the guild will have the title symbol of failure floating over their heads. It does not have any special effects, but it is the proof of shame. To remove this symbol of failure, the same members must once again remake their guild. Of course, there are class that cannot have the symbol of failure, and there are also classes that can be nothing except to be the one that breaks the guild weapon.